dear students so now i am going to start chapter number 2 which is applied thermodynamics uh, in this chapter first of all i am going to take introduction of this chapter applied thermodynamics means the thermodynamical concepts that we studied so far that concept we are going to use or utilize in real life problems so how we can use those concepts in real life problem so we have to uh, do we can do that by using heat engines okay so what are those uh, heat engines and how the working principle of those heat engines so that is very important part of uh, this thermodynamical course now in this course we are starting with first point which is conversion of heat into work and its converse converse means conversion of work into heat so heat and work both are the two different things heat is one of the form of energy uh, more specifically heat energy is a thermal energy okay possessed by uh, due to internal kinetic energies of uh, individual molecules which are present in that substance next one is work so work why that work is important because work is important when whenever we are using uh, using heat engine at that time heat engine can convert mechanical uh, heat engine can convert energy into mechanical work okay so that's why this uh, part is very important uh, here as we know q suppose is the heat energy which is directly proportional to we can say mechanical equivalent of work which is j okay so q is directly proportional to j where q is heat energy and j is mechanical equivalent of this heat so in another words we can convert this joule into calorie so we can write relation 1 calorie is 4.186 joules okay and this way heat and work are directly proportional their relation is given so more heat and we can get more work from that system now we are moving to next point which is second law of thermodynamics uh, before studying second law of thermodynamics in previous chapter in first chapter we already studied first law of thermodynamics so just recall that first law of thermodynamics what is statement of that uh, if three systems system a system b and system c are in thermal equilibrium with each other and they are separated from each other by adiabatic by adiabatic wall at that time if system a and system b are in direct contact and they are in thermal equilibrium with each other and system b and system c are in thermal equilibrium then we can say system a and system c are in thermal equilibrium with with each other so that is the statement for first law of thermodynamics now for second law of thermodynamics uh, we can state second law of thermodynamics in four different statements in exam if uh, you have asked write down second law of thermodynamics so you can write any statement out of these four statements first one is simple statement then kelvin's statement which is formulated by kelvin third one is clausius statement which is given by clausius and fourth one is statement in terms of entropy so first of all simple statement in simple statement for second law of thermodynamics is that uh, second law of thermodynamics states that heat cannot flow from hot uh, from cold body to hot body heat always flows from a body at higher temperature to a body at lower temperature so this is the simple statement okay so you know that there is a thumb rule in thermodynamics what is that thumb rule heat energy always passes from a body which is at higher temperature to a body which is at lower temperature now next statement which is kelvin statement and clausius statement 
both these statement also related with conversion of heat into work. So what are those statement? Heat energy cannot flow from a body at lower temperature to a body at higher temperature unless and until it is acted upon by some external agency. Okay. So we need some external agency, some driving force to convert to we can say push heat energy from body at lower temperature to body at higher temperature. Last one is statement in terms of entropy. So in terms of entropy in case of second law of thermodynamics, uh, the statement is very simple. Entropy of the universe is 10 towards maximum. Okay. So this is the very very simple statement among all the statements. So entropy universe is tend towards maximum okay so i will suggest you that you can uh, take this statement for your exam purpose okay recall this statement because this is very simple statement and easy to understand entropy of universe is tend towards maximum now we are moving to next point, concept of entropy. Here you can see in statement of second law of thermodynamics, there is new concept which is entropy is introduced over here. So that is why entropy is very essential and very, very important to understand. So very simple definition of entropy is that Entropy is quantitative measure of disorder in the system, in a thermodynamic system. So, with that statement, until now, the true nature of entropy is not fully understood. Okay? There is a lot of research and all those things are going about the concept of entropy. So, entropy is a disorder in the system. What is mean by disorder? So that disorder is related with many, many more factors. For example, you know in a crystal, in a crystalline material, atoms are regularly arranged in a periodic manner. If you change their order, their periodicity, then entropy is introduced, uh, entropy is introduced in that system. Okay. So also, uh, you know that if, uh, take simple example like class which is full of students and each and every student is sitting on single bench. Okay. Now if you change arrangement of uh, if you change sitting arrangement of students, okay, how they are seated in that time, okay, at that time, sorry, at that time the entropy of that system is changed. Okay. So if only single student is there or out of of all out of all students 50 percent students are there okay or all the students are present then entropy is different so entropy depends upon number of molecules which are present in the system how those molecules are arranged and there are many 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 more factors on which entropy depends okay so that is uh, i can say entropy which is con uh, con uh, entropy concept is not very uh, easy to understand or grasp Okay. But it is related with some quantitative measure for disorder okay. and that disorder is related with position, size, shape and all those things, physical okay. that things, uh, things that we can see and the things that we cannot see, all the things are related with entropy. Uh, now if you look into formula for entropy, so ds is change in entropy, so change in entropy ds is equal to dq upon t where dq is amount of heat energy absorbed or rejected at temperature t. So change in entropy is equal to amount of heat energy or uh, absorbed or rejected at temperature t. So ds is equal to dq upon t. So this is the formula for change in entropy. Uh, now one more important thing about entropy. Entropy is a state function and a new thermodynamic variable. So state function. So I think know what is mean by state function. State function means a function which does not depend upon path. It depends only on 
initial and final positions. If I can say change in entropy ds, so change in entropy depends only on initial and final position of the system. It does not depend upon path taken by the system during process. So such functions are known as state function. Uh, out of along with other thermodynamic variable, internal energy per unit mass is also a state function. Entropy is a state function and new thermodynamic variable along with, so these are the thermodynamic variables, pressure, volume, temperature and U which is internal energy per unit mass. So all those thermodynamic variables okay, are not, uh, are added, all, all those thermodynamic variables have one more addition which is entropy. So with this you understand the importance of entropy in uh, thermodynamics. Another thing about entropy, very important thing about entropy, we cannot measure entropy but we can measure change in entropy. Okay. So if I, I would say what is the entropy of the system, so we cannot directly tell entropy is this much. We can determine only change in entropy of that thermodynamic system. Now for adiabatic change, uh, from definition of adiabatic change, we know that, uh, we know that definition of adiabatic change is that. For adiabatic process, there is no heat energy absorbed or rejected by the thermodynamic system. Such system or such process is known as adiabatic process. So for adiabatic process, dQ is equal to 0. Therefore, if you put dQ is equal to 0 in this equation, in equation 1, we can say dS is equal to dQ upon T. If dQ is equal to 0, then dS is equal to 0 upon T. So that is also equal to 0, which means for this system ds is equal to 0. For adiabatic process there is no heat absorbed or rejected by the system that is why dq is equal to 0 and we can say ds means change in entropy is equal to 0. If ds is equal to 0 in another words we can say s which is entropy is equal to constant. So such processes are also known as isentropic processes. So adiabatic processes are also known as isentropic processes. Uh, with this uh, brief summary about what is mean by entropy, okay, all those uh, things that I uh, told you, uh, I think I should uh, finish our lecture over here, in next lecture we will continue the same topic.